What do we do to ensure private victories? What principles do we adopt to ensure positive personal change? Sit with me as we continue with part two of the seven habits of highly effective people series. Today, we are going to delve deep into habits one, two, and three. And so subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Smash the like button. Thank you very much. Now let's go into learning some things to ensure we win privately. Habit one, be proactive. As humans, proactivity means that we are responsible for our own lives. Our behavior is a function of our decisions and not our conditions. And so we have the initiative and the responsibility to make things happen in our lives. And so the emphasis here is on responsibility. He says responsibility is your response plus ability. So your ability to be able to choose your response. And so for people who are highly proactive, they recognize this responsibility. And so they do not blame circumstances, conditioning, like for their behavior. Their behavior is a product of their own conscious choices. The author goes ahead to say that people are either reactive or proactive. Reactive people, he says, are people who are driven by circumstances, conditions, environment, you know. There are people that when the weather is good, they feel good. When the weather is bad, they don't feel good. They, I mean, their performance is poor. When something happens, I mean, outside, external things happen, it affects them. But Proactive people are people driven by value, things they carefully think about. The weather and all those other things also affect them, but the way they react is very conscious and they make, I mean, conscious choices about these things. So they are not really affected by when the weather is bad, they are also in a bad mood. When the weather is good, they are also in a good mood. They make confident choices. And so the first habit focuses on our imagination, our conscience, self-awareness. Most of us grew up and then we blame our behavior, our circumstances, our conditions on so many things. Somebody will say, I have bad temper because that's how my grandparents were. Another will say, I'm behaving this way because this is how my parents treat me or that's how my parents taught me or that's how my parents are. Someone will say, I'm behaving this way because the kind of friends I grew up with, that's how they behave, your environment, so many other things. So we like to apportion blame so just attach our behavior to certain things that have been happening in our lives and so this habit is helping us to trying to correct those things and so he says that it's not what happens to us but a response to what happens to us that hurts us and so he's not saying things cannot affect us physically or even economically but how do we choose to handle these things how do we choose to handle these problems or these difficulties we encounter he goes ahead to say that there are three central values in life. The experiential, the things that happen to us, the creative, the things that we bring into existence, and the attitudinal, a response in difficult circumstances such as terminal illness. And so he says that most people wait for good things to happen to them, but people who are proactive, they go ahead to start solving solutions, they go ahead to start looking for the good jobs. I mean, they get the good jobs because they are proactive about it. They don't blame anything on their circumstances and conditions. It's based on their value and the choices they intentionally decide to make. He likened this to the story of Joseph in the Bible. His brothers decided to sell him for so many reasons. And then when he went there, he went through a series of sufferings. But because he was like a proactive person, he was able to rise through the ranks. He didn't, based on the fact that my brothers sold me because they rejected me. Now I am a slave here. I am this. He decided to be proactive about it and was able to rise through the ranks. So he's saying that be a proactive person. Do not usually focus on the conditions and circumstances make choices i mean be a value person make choices about life and you always come out with solutions and rise through the ranks and so he goes ahead to say that proactive people are people who intentionally want to lead happy lives they want to live in harmony with people and when people hurt them they intentionally make choices i mean their response is not to want to hurt them but he likened it to the fact that if a snake bites you if you decide to run after the snake the poison will go through your entire system it is way better to sit there and try to remove the poison i mean immediately than running after the snake so our choices is way, like we should consciously make choices that will affect us positively habit two: begin with the end in mind he introduces this chapter saying that imagine you are sitting at the funeral it turns out that this funeral is your funeral and four people are allowed to give a tribute of your life your spouse your children 
I mean, an extended family member and probably a community member or a church member or somebody is supposed to give it. And you're sitting there, what would you like these people who are coming to give the tribute to say about your life? What are the things you would want them to say? What are the things you think if they say about your life, you'll be proud of it? It's similar to something I usually hear somebody say that what would you like written on your gravestone? I think it's actually a deep question you want to ponder on. And so this chapter actually is a chapter which allows you to imagine. So he says that begin with the end in mind is to begin today with the image, picture or paradigm of the end of your life as your frame of reference or the criterion by which everything else is examined. And so with this, your daily behavior, weekly behavior, monthly behavior is examined as something in a whole. Now you look, you know what she wants your life to be at the end. So each decision you make daily, weekly, monthly should contribute to actually achieving that life you want at the end of the day. And so he says that if you carefully consider the things you wanted people to say at your funeral, most of the things we strive for or the things we define as success, money, fame, and other things might not be things that are actually necessary. And so thinking of your life upside down, so from the end coming back, beginning the, with the end in mind, makes you actually look at life from a different perspective. And you will start striving and, I mean, going after things that are actually very necessary. Beginning with the end in mind also affects other areas of our lives. Let's say you want to have a successful business. You just don't get up and start opening that business. Probably it will fail, but you have to consider. I mean, you have to plan, you have to research, you have to look for finances, you have to develop marketing, so many other things. So you would sit down and plan through carefully the things that are needed to ensure that this enterprise or this business is successful. You don't just get up and say, I'm starting a business. Mostly it will end. And so beginning with the end in mind means that you also have to carefully plan things that you want to achieve or things that you want to have or to be a success in your life. One final thing I want to talk about this habit is that he says that we have to rescript our lives. As I said or have been talking since this book started, is that most of us grew up saying I have this attitude because of my grandparents or because of my I mean family members or mother or father. Or sometimes we are even affected by our environment. And in the first episode I said that we see the world as we are and not actually as it is. And so we have to start rescripting our lives to actually what exactly it is or what we, it means to us. And so to be able to rescript our lives, he advises that each person should have a personal mission statement. And a personal mission statement is more or less like a personal constitution, things that you want to do to be able to follow. Or you look at your life and the things you want to achieve, you write them down. And every day you go by these guidelines. He actually, in the book, explains how you can do this personal mission statement. And that's why I advise that you should actually read the book and see it. It's such a mind-blowing book that I cannot bring out all the details. This is just a summary for you to go read the book to learn so many other important things. Habit three, put first things first. To better understand this habit, let me do a summary of habit one and habit two, and then we'll come to this. So habit one, we are looking at our proactivity, so our responsibility, response plus ability, the things, how we respond to things, so our choices. Habit two, we are looking at beginning with the end in my imagination. How do we want our lives to be like? Habit three, we are now looking at personal management. First things first, how do we act on it and the priorities? What are the things we are supposed to do first? What are the things we are not supposed to do first? How do we achieve these private victories or the things we want to change in our lives? One of the ways to be able to actually act on the things we have said we want to do or the choices we say, I mean the choices we are choosing and the responsibilities we are taking is actually personal integrity. And so here, integrity is the value we place on ourselves, our commitments, the commitments we keep to ourselves, and even we able to walk our talk, the things we say we want to do, are we actually able to do it? That's where integrity lies within all of these. And so from the book, there's a quote he shares that says that things which matter most must never be at the mercy of things which matter least. 
with this he goes ahead to talks about how to manage our time but i already have a video i made on how to manage our time so i'm not going to repeat with this because he speaks about learning to say no i mean prioritization and other things but one thing he spoke that i want to emphasize on he says that we shouldn't focus on daily planning but rather we should focus on weekly planning you sit down and plan your week when you plan your week you have a picture of how your week wants to be and now on a daily basis you just sit down and revise so every morning you sit down and revise that okay within the week i said i wanted to do this 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 week what will i be doing how do i ensure that it it is actually actualized and so in summary habits one two and three are actually things we are supposed to work within ourselves to be able to have private victories so how do you react in a difficult situation what are the choices you are supposed to make what are the imaginations how do you want your life to be like and how do you act upon it i mean what are the ways through delegation, through prioritization, which other means would you be able to do to achieve them? So if you are able to follow habits one, two, and three, then we'll be able to have private victories and we'll be able to change our lives. In fact, I'm really enjoying this book so much. And for the fact that it was written over two decades ago and all the things being shared in this book are still timely, just blows my mind. So I would really wish you would actually try to read this. There are just so many things there that I would not be able to share with you. So read it and see for yourself. Please subscribe to the channel if you have haven't already smash the like button share this to somebody and i already have an episode one i made last week that i'm going to leave at the end in the time management video i'm going to leave at the end here as well subscribe and next week i'll be bringing part three of the seven habits of highly effective people see you later bye